G'day Guardians, Rogi here, and today Grandmaster Season is upon us. With the introduction of Scorn Champions in Season of the Lost comes the Hollowed Lair's first appearance in the Grandmaster rotation, and let me tell you, this strike packs a punch. Let's start things off by going through what modifiers we'll be facing in the Hollowed Lair today. The most impactful is also the first up, Festering Rupture, which spawns a mini Screeb every time a Scorn Stalker is killed. And oh boy, there are a lot of them. Next up, we have the usual suspects, Unstoppable and Overload Champion, the package of Grandmaster specific modifiers, Contest Mode locking you at 1345 light, Extra Champions, Lock Loadout, Match Game, and Extra Shields, which isn't really important as there are only two Elemental Shields, one Arc, one Solar, not including the boss. Uh, disabled Radar, and finally the Fanatic's Zeal, a new modifier in Season of the Lost, giving Scorn Ravages amplified stasis abilities. Now, let's review my fire team's loadout. I'm running Bottom Tree Void Hunter with Omnioculus. As for weapons, I've got Ignition Code with Blinding for Ad Control, Arsenic Bite for Overload, and finally 1000 Voices for Champion and Boss Melt. For armor mods, a pretty standard mix of high-end content mods, protective light for survivability, supercharge to increase the resistance duration of protective light, double sniper resistance, and I can't stress this enough, without double sniper resistance you're going to have a very difficult time dealing with the Scorn Raiders. Charged up for becoming charged with light, powerful friends for the extra mobility, this is important as we're going to need our dodge roll as often as possible, and finally radiant light for the extra strength so we can have more uptime on our smoke bomb. Matt and Cryptic were both running Shade Binder Warlocks, Matt using Blinding Ignition Code, Vex Mythoclast for the Unstoppables, and Tarantula to deal with the massive arc shield that the Fnatic has during his Tractor Beam phase. In armor mods, he's got double firepower, which when paired with Eye of Another World, makes for maximum Bleak Watcher uptime. Supercharged and charged up with Particle Deconstruction to top it off. Cryptic was running a similar build to Matt, with the only change being Wither Horde in the primary slot and Arsenic Bite in energy. Also running Shadebinder Warlock with Eye of Another World as the exotic. So let's get into the Grandmaster itself. Be prepared to die. A lot. These tiny screebs seem to pop up from nowhere and always at the worst possible time. Make sure you're calling out to your fire team any time a stalker is taken out. These screebs don't seem to care if you're invisible, they'll kill you. These screebs don't care if you're on top of being invisible. You shoot out a blinding nade, have a bleak watcher and are reviving your ally, they'll kill you. These screebs don't even care if the game's terrain is in the way, they'll fall through the floor and kill you. It's not just the Screebs that will kill you. You don't do enough damage to the spider tank in its final moments. It also self-destructs and guess what? Kills you. Oh, the least threatening thing in this strike are the champions. Whew. Rant over. All right, time to cover each room and how to clear them. The first room is simple enough. One unstoppable champion, an array of lurkers scattered amongst them, a few stalkers and Screebs. Finish off the champion first and mop up any remaining ads and move on. The next room is also a bit of a taste tester of what's to come. Here you'll find an Overload Chieftain equipped with a seemingly endless supply of invincibility ether shields, backed up by a large group of spawn and my second most hated enemy of the strike, the Raider. <laughs> the Raider, like the Scree, will one-shot you if you do not have double snipe resistance on, so please don't make the same mistakes I did in my early runs and come prepared. Use your grenades and AoE from the ignition code to take out the group of adds surrounding the overload champion. Make sure the bow users are taking out that raider up in the rafters. Once all the adds have been taken out, you can easily take down that remaining champion. Overload bow, it's such a treat compared to overload SMG from last season, so should be fine. Take him out and move on. In the third room, we encounter our first mini boss of the strike. Now, this guy is a bit of a pushover, having a really easily and avoidable Scorch Cannon attack. Simply stepping left or right should do the trick, but he does come backed up by two unstoppable champions and a handful of raiders. Myself and Cryptic focused on damaging the mini boss, while Matt, using Vex Mythoclast, dealt with the oncoming champions. Be warned though, 
The Raiders have been placed in strategic positions with absolutely killer line of sights. And as mentioned before, will one-shot you. In a few of our early runs, myself and Crit Cryptic even got hit by a collateral one-shot a few times. These Raiders don't mess about. Now we come to our first challenging encounter, the Tank Room. The tank starts with one overload and one unstoppable positioned just in front of the counterweight. We were having a lot of success standing in the doorway, focusing down the unstoppable, then moving on to the overload. The unstoppable is easy enough to kill as it's a big target and the AI doesn't seem to position him behind any cover. The overload will be a bit more slippery. Throwing down ether shields, which cause you to step out of position to get the final blow, two corrupted raiders can be found at each end of the room, drawing a bead right on the doorway. Use your bows to deal with them any time they poke out, as if left unattended, can make short work of your fire team. With every enemy killed, it's time to do a quick ammo run and stand on the counterweight to activate the next stage of this room. We found positioning ourselves in the small room to the right of the counterweight to be the most effective. Upon activation, the spider tank will enter the room, backed up by two overload champions and a small army of stalkers, each filled to the brim with mini screeds. The only threat here is a mini screed sneaking past your defenses and wreaking havoc. Otherwise, the spider tank and far champion will not fire at you when using that room as cover. The close champion can easily be taken down with Vex Mythoclast, stacking particle deconstruction and one or two shots of 1k. Once only the spider tank remains, deal with it the same way you would any other. Pick a leg, shoot it off, and destroy its weak spot. Beware of flying debris. Don't ask me how I found that out. A short passage with an extra life in the form of an unstoppable champion and a couple of Screeb stalkers, then it's on to my least favourite part of this strike, the double counterweight room. This room starts with two overload champions who, once caught out of position, are easy enough to take down. Thin the ads first, as usual prioritizing the corrupted raiders. Once the room has been cleared, you'll need to activate the counterweights. Upon stepping on one of these, a wave of ads will spawn almost immediately, comprised primarily of stalkers, so be on the lookout of any incoming mini screebs. Repeat for the second counterweight and then get in position for the third and final mini boss of the strike, the Vengeful Hand. Once again, this mini-boss doesn't pose too much of a threat, whose general purpose is to just kind of be a bullet sponge. As I'm sure you become accustomed to by now, a wave of stalkers will spawn, although this time with a few stasis ravages sprinkled in. The ravages are simple to fell, shooting their stasis torch will insta-kill them. Dealing about 75% of the Ventral Hand's health bar will spawn the next wave of adds, accompanied by a single overload champion. Make sure you do not continue dealing damage to the boss or he'll spawn a second wave and another overload champion which will make things infinitely more difficult. After dispatching both waves, turn your attention to the bullet sponge and spend about the next 3 minutes whittling down his insanely massive health pool. On the way to the boss room, you'll encounter a small group of lurkers and an overload. The overload is nice enough to walk out in the open, allowing for you to easily pick him off. Keep heading forwards to the bridge where you'll face off against two unstoppable champions, a ragtag group of scorn, and most importantly, two corrupted raiders on either side. Now, Matt was easily handling both of the unstoppables by using Vex Mythoclast, while Cryptic and I focused on taking down the raiders using our bows. Finally, we have made it to the boss room where we face off against the fanatic himself. Positioning in this fight is key. Our first few attempts, we grouped towards the entrance of the room, hiding behind these big metal chunks. But due to the boss's first move, the massive arc area of effect, and his shots taking us down in one hit, we quickly figured out that a change was needed. The positioning that worked best for us had Matt and Cryptic each taking a side and myself holding the center. The boss fight plays out like this. The Fnatic will target a player, start shooting them, and eventually call down the arc field. Make sure to call out which player has been targeted by the arc field as that will give the other two a little bit of breathing room as he won't throw down another arc field until the first one has run out. Well, this early in the encounter anyway. After reaching a certain damage threshold, he'll call for backup, beaming in a group of our favourite enemies, the Stalker. He always starts with the right side, so having a Shane Binder Warlock with Bleak Watcher ready is key. 
I would dip over to the right side, fire off some blinding grenades to support Cryptic while Matt continued to damage the boss. Now, one mistake we made was dealing too much damage to the boss, causing the next wave of adds to spawn before we had dealt with the first one, quickly overwhelming us. After clearing both sides and continuing the damage output, he'll turn invincible, retreat behind a void wall, and call upon a massive army of scorn whose one purpose in life is to make yours difficult. Blinding nades, bleak watchers, and winter's wrath, you'll need every tool in your arsenal to survive this onslaught. Within the first waves of onslaught will be a single overload champion. It'll be difficult to focus him down early, so just be aware he is there and play the fight according to the enemy density. You want to be rotating around the room, constantly moving to avoid being cornered, swarmed, and sent back to orbit. After surviving the first onslaught, it's back to boss DPS. Get shots where you can, but focus on staying alive, as arc fields and adds will be spawned similar to the first phase. Eventually, he'll start his tractor beam phase, where you'll be teleported into the air and slowly dragged towards him. The Fnatic covers himself in a massive arc shield, which both Cryptic and Westy's tarantulas make short work of. Once free, run for cover as a wave of adds will be spawning. I like to save my vortex grenade here for this wave as it insta-kills the mini screeds the second they spawn out of the stalkers. Continue weaving in shots and he'll set start his second onslaught phase. Once again, calling in every single scorn on the tangled shore to hunt you down. Same plan as before, use every cooldown you have available and continuously fire off those blinding grenades. Hitting a target is great, but remember, the blinding still goes off even if you miss everyone. This is important as it stops the stalkers from throwing out their grenades, which basically one-shot you. This onslaught also contains a champion, but this time of the unstoppable variety. Deal with this and be rewarded with the tractor beam phase once again. While breaking his shield does give you the most amount of time to reposition and deal damage, the fight isn't over if you mess it up. With perfect timing, I was actually able to dodge away, saved by protective light, ready to continue the fight. Welcome to the final phase, where the Fnatic turns it up a notch, throwing down two arc fields and continuously spawning scorn. The best strategy here, melt the boss. Go all in and try to kill him as fast as you can or you'll eventually be overrun. With enough firepower, you can effectively burst him down an entire health bar. So sync up your attack with your fire team and unleash the light. This Grandmaster was an absolute blast to play. Each room filled with a good variety of enemies, the mini Screebs adding a new layer of threat and facing Scorn for the first time at their full strength. I hope this walkthrough helps you and your fire team find success. As always, I'll see you next time, Guardians.